Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Um, uh, my name is Eve. This is Everyday Artist and I'm uh, trying to give you guys tools where you can create your own art. And uh, this is uh, a tree, um, an easy way to make trees in a forest. Um, not very complicated. Um, I have here a, um, this palette is actually a magnet comes in three uh, at Hobby Lobby, but any any canvas will do. Um, and uh, I have it sitting on my palette because since it's thin and I wanna go right up to the edges, I don't wanna get my uh, table dirty and I don't feel like putting newspapers and stuff on my, on my uh, drafting table. So uh, we're going to use a variety of colors here. These are not going to be realistic tree colors, although you can make it with realistic tree colors if you like. Um, I'm kind of using this as my inspiration. Uh, this is a picture that was taken by my sister up at Hyde Park in uh, the mountains in New Mexico. And um, let's get started. Okay, so you're going to need water, of course. Um, there are a variety of paint brushes and you probably are going to need a, a small one, uh, a big one for doing the background. I probably won't use these, but if I do, I'll let you know. And um, uh, a fan brush. Uh, you don't need a fan brush, um, but it just kind of makes the trees a little bit easier. Okay, so uh, as for colors, uh, the background, I'm going to uh, use a, a couple of different colors. Uh, Viridian, that is a, a kind of a deep uh, green color. Black. Payne's Gray. Um, this is uh, this is Master Touch, which is a variety is a paint made by um, made by uh, Hobby Lobby. It's a student grade. It actually is pretty decent, but uh, Liquitex puts out a student grade called Basics, and uh, Grumbacher has a student grade called. I think Academy, any of those are fine. You don't need to go and buy premium paint to learn. Um, eventually we will be using some titanium white. Uh, we will also be using phalo blue. Now I call it phalo, but if you can see that is a really long name. And everybody just calls it Fable. And um, I used uh, burnt umber on uh, some trees I did just the other day, and I'm not sure that I'm happy with the color, so I'm probably going to go with Van Dyke Brown this time. And uh, burnt umber is just a, a redder color. Um, so, um, I know that sounds like a lot of colors and I haven't even finished. I'm going to be, uh, doing some yellow and I'm sorry, this is uh, yellow deep, but it's kind of an orange color and yellow medium, which looks yellow. And, um, Persian red, which is kind of a pink color. Now, I might use the grass green. It depends on how I feel it's going. Okay. So, uh, to get started, I'm going to put some paint on my canvas. And you need to paint... Oh, one other thing. You're going to need a rubber glove. You can buy these. It's like... Uh, 
a dollar for 10 pair, but you only need one. Okay, so uh, I'm going to put some phthalo blue. And because I want this to stay kind of wet for a while, I'm going to put some... Um, I know you can't see my my palette, but I'm putting it around the around the little canvas. Um, I'm going to put some uh, slow drying medium on there. Now my emerald green is not open. Uh, these uh, little tiny paints, they were given to me by a relative for Christmas, and they're they're nice, and I want to use them up before I use up the, you know, use the bigger things. Now, so when you come across a paint tube that is not open, the paint tube cap has a little pointy thing, and you just poke it in, but be careful not to squeeze the tube, because if you do... You will end up with paint all over the place. And this is, as you see, this is kind of a light green. This is uh, the emerald green. I don't know if I showed it to you earlier. And here is a Viridian. And putting these out, these are going to be some of my darker colors, not all of them. I'm not using black right now, uh, but I am using the Payne's Gray. You don't need a lot of, I mean, this is a tiny little canvas, you know, don't pour out more paint than you actually need. It's, you know, you don't want to have to throw away paint. Um, there's not really any reason for that. And on my canvas, I'm going to go ahead and put out some of the yellow deep, just, just a little. Okay, I bought this for this project and it's not open. I apologize for that. I don't open my paints until I use them because I don't want them to get dry. Okay, so what I'm really going to be concentrating on right now are the Payne's Gray and the and the Phalo Blue. Um, the uh, and the Emerald as the dark colors. Uh, or cool colors and um, the uh, lighter green I have them like this around the canvas edge um, the lighter green is the is a warmer color and of course the yellow deep is a warmer color and I'm just going to add a little bit of the uh, slow dry blending medium to it just a, a drop or two in each color you mix it in and it just helps it stay a little bit liquid longer because I want to blend them together a lot now if I were using a bigger canvas I would use a bigger brush but this one is a decent size and I'm going to have light coming into my trees kind of at an angle so I'm going to give myself an imaginary line like right here and in my world, my light part is over here, and my dark part's over here. I'm going to start with the dark part. And I just kind of, I have uh, blue on this side and Payne's gray on this side. They look kind of the same, but um, they're not. And, um, and that's called double loading your brush. And I have my imaginary line right here. And I'm just putting this background color on. And while your brush strokes matter, um, because they can be seen, you know, it's just like, you know, some of the old masters, you they can tell uh, if it's authentic or not by the brush strokes. 
Um, brush strokes are unique to an artist, but you do want to be mindful of your brush strokes um, because they can be seen in in the finished work. So I'm I'm going at an angle here, and I I want to have the darker just a little bit more, uh, taking up more space than the lighter. Now I haven't used the green yet, but I'm going to be putting the green in here. So, okay. So, I'm not washing my paintbrush. I'm just going ahead and uh, putting that green on there with this color because I do want it to blend in. And I don't know if you can see uh, on the video, there's um, some streaks of, there's some streaks of the green, um, there's some streaks of the, of the blue, um, but this is intended to be dark. Now, I'm going to rinse off my paintbrush really well, and I don't know if I mentioned, but you need paper towels. Whenever you're painting paper towels or something to blot your paint paint brushes on uh, to make sure that you get excess water and uh, color off of your paintbrush. Um, you don't want to wash them in between, but you do want to make sure that you're not transferring paint that you don't intend to transfer from one um, side to the other. Now, that uh, Viridian Green, I used it on the dark side. I'm also going to use it here on the light side and I'm going to be adding in some of the lighter color. I'm going to blend it here in just a second. Again, I use a paper palette uh, mostly, I have a couple of hard palettes, but I just don't like washing them. I like the ease of being able to just take my paper palette and and uh, take my paper palette and go ahead and and throw it away. Okay, I'm taking some of this medium yellow and I'm going to be blending it in here. And that's going to come right up into here. You do want to see, you don't want to blend it to where you don't see the, the different colors. You do want to see the different colors. Now, some of that dark is leaking over onto the, onto the light. And we're going to have some of this light leaking over onto the dark here. Because unless it's a, a shadow of an object, you don't have sharp edges of light and dark. Okay, so this is going to have to dry. It'll dry pretty quickly, so you know we're not going to be stuck looking at it uh, with nothing to do for you know forever so I'm gonna go ahead while that's drying I'm gonna go ahead and um, put some Van Dyke Brown on my canvas and um, if it blends in I mean if if the paint isn't completely dry that's okay um, I'm not putting slow drying medium on this because I don't need to blend it into anything not really and I'm going to go ahead and put uh, a little bit of black and a little bit of uh, a little bit of white. on my palette. I'm not going to use a lot of these colors. I've, I've probably put way too much. Um,
the other day I opened this white and got paint all over me. Okay, so I always have to remember to open it away from my body, open paint things away from your body, or you're going to get paint all over you sometimes. Not every time, sometimes. Okay, so for the trees, this is going to be for the tree trunks. Um, I'm going to start out using um, a variety of sizes of square. Um, I was going to do just two two strokes of this, but maybe I want to do just one of a bigger one. Nah, I'll just keep with this. Okay, so depending on the size of your canvas, you know, if your canvas is bigger than this, you may want a larger paintbrush. Um, but since we're drawing something that's relatively straight, and when I say relatively, don't try to make it ramrod straight. Uh, trees are not like that. They're just kind of organic and move around a little bit. So we're going to get some brown. And I like to start at the bottom and put some trees. Now you probably can't see this here um, on, on the video, but it is a little bit visible to me and you're the only one that needs to see it at this point it, it'll become clearer in a little bit and I'm going to put one over here and this one it, I'm putting just a little bit closer to the edge you can actually put it right on the edge if you want to And it is picking up some of the color around it, and that's okay. And now I'm going to put a thinner one uh, right here. And I'm not worried that my line isn't completely straight. And I'm going to put a real big fat one right here. And I decide down here at the bottom about how wide I'm going to want that. And then maybe one that's really skinny. To get the really skinny one, this is a flat brush. I just, instead of painting with it like this, I paint with it like this. I think I want one more. Um, it's important that you vary the widths. Now, you can um, have them where they, uh, one starts up higher than the other, but it's not necessary. I'm going to make the, this one ended up being about the same width as that one. So, so I'm going to make this one close to the edge fatter. The middle of our tree disappeared right here. Now, I'm going to set aside this brush for a minute. And I'm going to talk about the fan brush. Um, these trees are very little for this brush. I actually should probably be using one that's tinier. But I don't have a tinier one. I have a bigger one. So I'm just going to use, like, right here. Okay. Um... And I'm doing it kind of dry brush, which means I'm not adding any water to my brush. And I'm going to start with the uh, highlight side, which is the white. And I'm putting just barely on the tips 
of the brush just a little bit and since the light is coming in from here it's going to be on this side right here and I just barely touch the paintbrush and kind of drag it a little bit and some can be dragged further apart try to stay on the edge of where you painted the tree color and some can be dragged further across they don't all have to be and you can skip they don't have to be you know all the way some spots can have none of this highlight area and of course this top part should have a little bit more highlight than maybe the bottom but you know if it doesn't work out that way that's all right nobody's gonna say well, trees don't look like that because this is your world this is your tree you can draw it however you want to now here the tree is so skinny that I really can just pat this along the edge because I'm using no water I have to frequently go back and get paint and don't push hard don't shove it down on the paper because you won't get the you won't get that little feathery look that this brush is intended to create this one is also pretty skinny so I'm not gonna be dragging it very much. There's nothing to drag it across. Now the white is picking up the the brown of the tree. That's okay. Okay, so um, this can also be accomplished if you have big canvas and big trees by taking a plastic edge of like a, an old credit card or something like that and using the edge of that to put it down and drag it. Um, but it's best to learn your skills of of doing it by hand but with a paintbrush we're going to do the same thing but with black now if you see it's all clumped together I don't want it clumped together okay and you basically do the other the same thing but this way and if you're like me and you can't draw that direction this is not nailed down you can just turn it over and get your black going that way and you can put this isn't going to show up as much because the tree color is dark but you can just put you know a little bit there just to give it a little bit of shadow on this side especially in areas where like the tree didn't draw as well but remember with this paintbrush you do not want to push hard and again this little tiny one I'm just gonna pat it down the side
Okay. I know it doesn't take very long. That's okay. All right, we're good. we're back to our little thin brush that we use for draw, dra drawing the trunks. I'm going to turn this right side up so that I know what I'm doing. And you're going to take your brown again. And this time you're going to put on branches. Now, remember, most branches are going up. One or two you'll find going down. Um, but they rarely go straight across like a telephone pole. Um, and I am going to start with this one. I'm going to start this this branch and it's going to go behind this tree and it's on top of the trunk here so it's coming from from in front and you don't need to put tons and tons of branches just a few because most of them aren't going to be seen and have some coming from behind the tree, therefore they're not seen in front. They don't all have to be straight. That's enough for that tree. I'm going to draw some on this one. Uh, and I think this one is going to go over like this. And it's important to remember which branch goes to which tree. And you can put little forks on the branches like this. And this one, since it's skinny, it's going to have little skinny branches. I'm putting more than one here. These are just organic shapes. Don't worry too much about it. Like I said, um, it's not going to matter that much in the long run, okay? Ouch. I'm st so now, this is a fatter trunk, so it, it's going to have fatter branches. But remember, you can make it wider, but you can't make it thinner. So don't... I'm putting this one over that tree. So don't, uh, both of these are coming from in front. Don't make it so wide that you can't, um, go back from that. I don't like the way that those look like a pattern, but oh well. Okay. And so this tree, I'm going to have one coming here. And have fun with this. Just, you know, don't stress about it. If you don't like your painting, you can always just paint over it and do something else. And often you're very critical on, for yourself. And others will look at it and really like it. And don't think they're just telling you, oh, yes, it's beautiful, when they really don't think that. Because they probably do really think that. Um... A lot of times it's hard to believe praise from others uh, when it comes to our artwork that, you know, because we're very critical of our own, own artwork. But have faith in yourself that that your stuff is, you know, is, uh, if you like it, that's what matters. But uh, all of us are more critical of ourselves than of others. Now, I can't really see what I'm doing here, but we're going to go back in and put um, the white and black. I'm not going to use the, I'm not going to use the fan brush for this because it was hard enough on that little tiny trunks. This is even worse. Okay, I'm going to start with the white and remember where the light is coming from. So I'm going to put the white on top. And keep in mind where it goes before and, and in back of. 
so that you keep the tree looking um, like it belongs in space there. And I know it seems like it would be easier to do it all at once, but I found that it's easier to do the trunks and then go back and do the the branches. And don't forget to look critically at your at your um, at your art to see if you've oh look I forgot a branch you know that kind of thing okay and I'm extend I extended that branch with just white um, these are really skinny branches and um, the black is going to go on next so you're not going to really be able to tell that there wasn't any brown in there I'm going to add a little bit more white here. Now, I'm liking the way this looks just like this, but See, I got that too fat. I pushed too hard. Um, you could leave it just like this. Just these trees with this background. And it's perfectly acceptable if you get it this far and you're like, I really like that. I don't want to do anything to it. Then don't. It's your art. You can do whatever you want to it. I can't even see what I might my branches here. Oh look, I put my hand in the paint. Um, you need to be careful if you put your hand in paint to immediately wipe it off because you don't want that ending up in the wrong place on your on your canvas. There's no branch up here and I feel like there should be. Okay. I'm going to go back and do the black. Oh dear. Paintbrush too wet. And I just made my paper towel into a point and touched it. Don't rub, you know. Don't get excited, because if it stayed that way, it would be okay. And this is just the barest hint of, of black. And remember, those that cross in, you need to put a shadow underneath like that. And there's no set, you know, do this one and then that one or anything like that. Um, just do them as you, as you see a look, this one and that one look almost identical and that bothers me. So I'm going to do something to this one to change it. Maybe to this one, it's easier because there's less branches. I'll have to add white to that and brown. It's important that they be random. And that just looked too patterned for me. Now, you don't have to use... Um, white and black if you want to use a darker version of the brown 
um, a lighter version of the brown, you know, then, then do so. Um, it's, uh, if you're painting, you can paint it however you want. Bet you're wondering why I wanted a rubber glove for this artwork. Well, I don't like getting my hands dirty. And just like I use uh, paper pellets so I don't have to wash it, that's why I'm going to be using that. Now, we do want to let this dry. Um, for a little bit uh, it doesn't have to dry you know a long time um, but we want the tree dry now that's why I didn't add any slow drying medium to the tree um, they need to be dry but while that's drying uh, we're going to talk about what we're going to do next so I'm going to go ahead and put this on my dominant hand and you can use any finger, um, but I'm going to probably go using my pinky, you know, because uh, it's the smallest one and this is a tiny little canvas. But if you have a larger canvas, you could uh, use a bigger finger. And I'm going to be using uh, that medium yellow again, um, this lighter yellow. I mean green. <laughs> I don't know my colors. Um, this uh, this shade of yellow, which is yellow medium. <laughs> Again, it's not open. So sorry. Now this master's touch that I was telling you about, it comes with just these little foil. Um, and then you just put the lid back on but um, again remember to open it away from you your body or you might end up with paint on you because a lot of times the paint is under pressure ouch 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 okay and pink I'm going to start on the it's the Prussian red but it's pink and this is going to need to be opened again because I bought it for this project. Oh, no, I used it for something else. Okay. Oh, yeah, I was drawing faces earlier. Okay, so I have these colors in close proximity to each other. Um, not because I need to blend them together or anything, but because I uh, want to remember that that's my... You know, there's where I have it right there. Those are my warm colors. So I'm going to just use this pinky and dab it. Just a tiny little dab. Okay. And uh, wherever there's a mistake is for sure where you want to put it. So you're going to just put leaves like this. They don't have to be full leaves okay and you do want to go pretty much everywhere we're not going to completely cover the canvas because then what would have the point been in you know putting this beautiful color background on it right but we do want the leaves falling down and don't forget to put some on the tree because the tree is um, going to have some leaves. Oh, that's that's the medium. Sorry, that one had medium on it from when I did the background. Now, don't pass your line with these lighter colors. 
Okay. Go back and get paint as you need to. You want them to actually look solid. Then just wipe it off. Comes off. And I'm going to go with the green next and we're just gonna do the same thing just go in and put some leaves anywhere random leaves and it doesn't take very long and you just go ahead and put some now this one I don't like how hard I pushed but it's all right just just barely touch it and you could do this with a paintbrush but with your finger, it's just, I don't know. For me, it's just a lot easier. I just stuck my hand in yellow and I don't, I'm not ready for yellow. Now you could use different gloves for different colors, but it wipes off pretty good. That's a lot of paint on this one. So I'm just gonna put a little less paint. And don't push hard. You're not trying to stick your whole th fingerprint on there. You just want some hint of the color in there. Okay, now I've chosen this particular green as the color that's going to be on both the light and the dark side. Um, even though it's not a cool color, it's kind of heading that way a little bit. So um, you're not going to put as many of them and you're not going to put them all the way into the dark area, but you're going to put some of these just to just to, you know, keep them in the same world. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to move on to pink. And again, I just wiped it off because these colors are going right on top of each other. So if they blend a little bit, it's okay. And you just want to try to aim for places where there isn't already a dot. And I'd appreciate your comments on this video if you um, feel like my explanations aren't clear enough or if you really like this and you'd like to see more like it. Um, I'd really appreciate your input on that. And uh, now the final color is the yellow on this uh, and see, I've barely used any paint. I've got, I poured out way too much paint. And as you get more colors on there, you don't feel the need to just keep adding. Because you do want to see, see the, some of the background still. You do want to see, you know, the other colors. You don't want them to blend all into one color. And if you keep putting them on there, they're just going to blend into the same color. And you'd look at it and see, oh, is there yellow missing from, you know, is there pink missing from an area? Is there yellow missing from an area? Try to have them, yeah, you know, kind of sort of easily, easy, uh, easily distributed. Okay, so I ran out of Viridian, so I'm putting some Viridian back on my 
board. I still have phthalo blue. I still have um, Payne's gray. Uh, but the Payne's gray, I'm going to add just a hair of white to it. That makes it Okay, so the paint's gray when you see it on my um, palette. This one, this paint's gray. When you see it on the palette, it looks black, right? But it's not black. And let me show you what happens when I add white. Do you see it turning blue? Kind of a bluish gray color, a slate color. You see that? So it 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 is a bluer color than black. So so I'm gonna start with the Payne's gray because it is the darkest, and I want to go up to the lightest and I put the little bit of white in it okay so it's it'll show up a little bit against the background not a lot just a little because this side is darker right and maybe a little bit more white in there just gonna get a touch of that light can barely see this color. Oops, now it's white. Uh, I'm gonna have to try to get that off just a second. I'm gonna deal with it here in a second. Don't panic about stuff like that, okay? Um, acrylic paint is a very forgiving medium. If you make a mistake, you, it's easy to fix. Um, but if you go and try to just hammer at it, um, it's harder. So I'm just going to use my paper towel to just touch that white paint. And I'm going to put another color over it. I'm just making it thinner. Okay. And the white doesn't look bad. It's just... It's just not something I necessarily want. Now I might look at that later and go, you know what, I really like that white. You know, it's pretty cool. Happy accident kind of thing. So um, sometimes that happens. You know, you you uh, don't intend something and, and it turns out that that's your favorite part or something like that. All right, so... Uh, I know that's barely visible, uh, but it is, I can see it here with my eye. And um, now I'm going with the brighter blue. And again, that's barely, barely visible. Um, I'm going to have to... Okay. Hmm. I had purple somewhere. I don't know where my purple went. Sorry. Oh. Okay. What is this color? Oh, it's ultramarine. It's hard as rock. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I'll just go back to this. Um, so I'm finding that these aren't very visible against my background. And I might have to go ahead and put in some some lighter colors. I added white to the phthalo blue. 
and I just made sure it was just a little bit of white so it could be seen. <laughs> so uh, I'm not really liking the the kind of the way that it's the tinted texture rather than a pure color. But thinking if I add purple, it'll look really pretty over here. Uh oh, I got yellow. I don't know how I got ye yellow all over here. I didn't have yellow in in my hand. Now, see how it made that smudge there? I actually don't really mind it, but if I did, I would just, you know, take something and go over it. It's not a big deal. Okay, so... I'm going to go ahead and add white to this side because it, it needs leaves that actually show up. And it still looks cool, so... And if you do like my videos, uh, go ahead and push that subscribe button, hit the little bell uh, so that you can see if I come out with videos. Now, I don't come out with them on any regular basis because I have a very crazy lifestyle, uh, but I, I do come out with them as often as I can. I, I have an area here that doesn't have any leaves at all. So I'm gonna pick a clean finger because that's a way different color. And I'm just going to, in the same order that I did before, kind of put, I didn't put the Viridian on this side, did I? No, I didn't. Okay. Oops. That is a big leaf. That's okay. It's bigger because I'm using a bigger finger. Okay, so now I'm going to put that Viridian over here and see, see what happens. Yeah, purple would be good here. And if I use um, terms that you don't understand, um, if you could give me a comment, I'll, on one of my videos, try to talk about what those terms mean. Um, but uh, I'm thinking this is done. Um, it's intended to be simple and not real detailed, but if you do want to, you can t then take your um, take your thinnest brush and your uh, brown color. And just go in and add a few branches here and there. Um, but it doesn't really need it. Just, you know, you can put little branches, you know, in areas that didn't have them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. And I should come, re I'm redoing my video on perspective um, because I realized part of the canvas couldn't be seen. Part of the, um, paper couldn't be seen and I, it, perspective is so difficult you need to really be able to see the whole thing so thank you very much um hope to see you back again bye